y'all Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about how to keep your electronics charged while backpacking. I know a lot of people go out into nature to escape the world for a bit, but your phone and other electronics can be useful tools while backpacking. Your phone alone can be a camera, a GPS device, a backup flashlight, a clock, and oh yeah, a communication device. You may also have a nicer camera or a headlamp that you want to charge, so for several different electronic devices, some backup battery power might be a good idea. First, let's talk about some ways to conserve the battery power life of your phone and other electronics. That way you don't need quite as much backup battery power. The first thing I do when I get out on the trail is put my phone in airplane mode, especially if you're in a place where you don't have service, airplane mode keeps your phone from continuously searching for service, which kills your phone really quickly. Even if you have service by putting it on airplane mode, it's going to help conserve the life of it. And then you can check for messages and place phone calls at strategic places like on top of a climb where you're more likely to have service than down in a bottom. The best bet is to keep it off completely when you're not using it, but if you find yourself taking a lot of pictures and videos like I do, then keeping it on power save or low battery mode works out better because I can still use it when I want to very quickly, especially if I'm trying to capture an animal or something that might not be sticking around for a while. It also helps to dim your screen brightness while you have it on, so only keep it as bright as you have to to actually see it. And then when I'm asleep at night, I go ahead and turn my phone off completely. That way it's not using power in the middle of the night when I'm definitely not going to be using it. Finally, you want to avoid temperature extremes. So you don't want to leave your phone or other electronics out baking in the sun because that can damage the battery. And I've noticed that my electronics, especially my phone, will die a lot faster if I have it in extreme cold. So if it's cold during the day while I'm hiking, I'll keep my phone or other electronics tucked down into my coat and then at night while I'm sleeping I'll keep them in the sleeping bag with me. There are really two main ways to charge your electronics while you're backpacking and that is through backup battery packs and solar panel chargers. The most common of these two is backup battery packs and the way that these work is you charge them at home before you go out on the trail. Then when you're on trail and your phone or other electronics need charged you just connect them with a cord to the battery pack that has a USB port and it's as simple as that. They make battery packs in all different shapes and sizes, but of course you don't want to take one that's bigger than you need because you'll just be carrying a bunch of extra weight. So then the question arises, well, exactly what size battery bank do I need? When you're shopping for backup battery packs, you'll notice that the electrical capacity of that battery is measured in milliamp hours. And you need to consider, well, how much percentage of my phone battery am I using daily? Then if you look at the milliamp hours of the battery on your phone or other electronic devices that you want to charge, you can do some pretty quick and rough math and figure out what you might need. Probably the easiest way to do this is when you're shopping around for backup battery banks, you can look at what the manufacturer says as far as what to expect in the way of charging a smartphone. I used my phone a ton on the CDT. I was videoing every day to document the experience and I took literally thousands of pictures, if not tens of thousands of pictures. And I had other electronics too, but I carried a 10,000 milliamp hour charger and a 20,000 milliamp hour charger. But that's really overkill unless you're doing something like vlogging, and you have other electronics also. One of the benefits of using a backup battery pack is that they're reliable as long as you make sure to get a good quality brand. I use Anchor, I like that brand, I know I can rely on it. I've heard that RAV Power is also good too. With a battery pack, you know what you're getting. Most of them have little dots that when the phone is charging up, they'll light up so you know how charged it is. And then also when you're charging your devices on trail, you'll see those lights slowly disappear. And when you get to that last one, it's pretty sad, but you know, you can start rationing your phone if you need to, but you know what to expect in the way of how much power you're gonna get and you can see it going as you use it. And they're really not too pricey. A 10,000 milliamp hour backup battery bank by Anchor is gonna cost about $30 and they're fairly lightweight for backpacking. So the 10,000 milliamp hour by Anchor is 6.3 ounces. Some of the drawbacks to using a backup battery bank is that when the power is gone, it's gone. There's no magical way to make more power go into it. So you know what you have to use and when you use it, it's done. Also, they can take a while to charge. Now this is a non-issue for most people who are gonna go out and 
do just one section and then go home. But if you're doing an extended section or a through hike, it can be a little problematic because the bigger the battery pack, of course, the longer it's going to take to charge. And the 10,000 milliamp hour charger takes about six to seven hours to charge. At least that's what Anchor says on their website. I've never personally timed it, but I agree that that sounds about right. Now me personally, as a through hiker, this really hasn't been an issue either because most of the time, because I'm putting out videos and vlogging as I go, when I get to a town, I generally stay the night to allow all of my battery banks to charge up, but also to take care of some things that I need to and to upload a video. Now, for most through hikers or people who are doing an extended section, they want to get into town sometimes, resupply, do some errands, and then get back on the trail. So having a battery pack that takes six to seven hours isn't really helpful when you're trying to just get in and get out. If you find yourself in this situation where you need the battery pack to charge faster, then you should check out the power banks that have the Qualcomm quick charge technology. The power banks with the quick charge technology generally have the quick charge output but now some of the latest and greatest ones have the quick charge input too, which allows the battery pack to charge quickly also. One example is the RAV Power 10,000 milliamp hour quick charge 3.0. And according to the manufacturer of that particular battery pack, it says online that it takes about three and a half to four hours to charge the battery pack, which is a great improvement from the six to seven hours if you're somebody that needs to get into town do some errands and allow your batteries to charge and then get out. These battery packs will come with a cord to charge the pack, but you need to make sure that you have a quick charge compatible wall charger that actually plugs into the wall. Now let's cover solar panel chargers. While these aren't as common among the backpacking world as the backup battery banks, there are still some people who use solar panel chargers. I think the biggest question when trying to decide between am I gonna use a backup battery or am I going to use a solar panel charger is where are you gonna be hiking? If you're gonna be hiking somewhere like the Appalachian Trail where you're under a green tunnel and you're not gonna have much sunlight hitting you and your pack, then you might not wanna have a solar panel charger because guess what, it needs the sun to charge. I think that the only way that it could really work out in a forested area like that is if you're aiming to go on a trip where you're not gonna be hiking that many miles and you're willing to stop and take a break at certain points when the opportunity arises where you have full sun and you can lay the solar panel out and let it go ahead and charge up your devices. Otherwise, I would reserve the solar panel usage for areas where you're going to be exposed, like in desertous areas or in higher elevations where you're above tree line. The best thing about solar panel chargers is that when they work well, it's wonderful because you can just charge your little heart out. But the issue there is that this can be weather dependent. Also, I found that they're a little more fussy to deal with while on trail because you're having to adjust the panel to make sure the sunlight is hitting it properly. And with backpacking, you're always changing different angles. So to me, I found with trying to make sure that I got all of the sunlight I could, that it was just something else to kind of think about and deal with. However, if you have your mind set on a solar panel, you know that that's what you wanna do. Some things that you wanna think about when you're selecting a solar panel is surface areas. Generally, the more surface area you have, the faster the panel is going to be able to charge a battery or your other electronics. But of course, with more surface area comes more weight and a solar panel that is now less packable. I had a Sun Tactics S5 charger that was rigid. I've seen people use the solar panels that are more flexible. If I had to do it again, I like the idea of one that's a little more flexible, but personal preference. Output capacity is definitely something you want to consider when selecting a solar panel, and this is measured in watts. The higher the number, the more electricity is going to be generated in a given time. The weight of the solar panel will be important. Maybe not while you're sitting there shopping for it, but later when you're having to carry it, the weight will matter. And if you do that calculation that I mentioned earlier with the battery packs, you might even realize that the battery pack that you would need for a given stretch of trail might weigh less than a solar panel anyway, so the solar panel might not be worth it. Something else you'll want to think about is, are you going to connect your phone or other electronics directly to the panel, or are you planning on bringing like a little battery pack 
so that you can charge the little battery pack from the panel and then later at night charge your phone. If you're hooking your phone directly to the solar panel charger and it ends up being rainy or cloudy, you could find yourself in a bind. I've heard people complain about having their phone directly connected to the solar panel and then if they hit a little bit of shade, the phone lets them know I'm no longer charging and then when they get back in the sun it lets them know, hey, I am charging and the phone constantly lights up and buzzes or makes a noise during all of that. So it can either be annoying, but even if you cut the sound off, then it's lighting up and going dim and lighting up and going dim. And I've heard people say that they feel like that act of lighting up and going dim is killing the phone faster than the solar panel can charge it. And I suppose you could always just turn your phone off as long as your phone will stay off while it's charging. If you're gonna hook your phone directly to the solar panel, you need to determine when you buy the solar panel that that is a safe option for your phone and that it won't damage your battery. Chances are it's gonna be less reachable, which for you may not be an issue if you're not planning to use it a whole lot while you're hiking anyway. I suppose you could get a really long cord so that you can still reach it, but it's definitely a consideration. If you decide to carry a little backup battery charger so you can charge it at night, then again, you might wanna consider the weight and just the hassle of everything is it worth it or is the battery pack that's a little bit bigger a better idea solar panels tend to run on the heavy side and they can also be pretty expensive but i think as technology advances the weight and price are getting a little bit better i know that it probably sounds like i'm just downing solar panel chargers and and i'm really not they all have their place but i just want to let you know what to think about and some issues that you could run into if you decide to use that as your source of power. I think that if you were gonna do something like backpack into a certain location and set up a base camp where you had some full sun and you were gonna be out there for several days and you could set the panel up somewhere and charge a backup battery pack that you take to do day hikes from that base camp, then a solar panel charger could really work for you. Or again, like I mentioned before, if you're just gonna be hiking a few miles each day and it's more about camping to you on this backpacking trip, then a solar panel charger might work out well for you and allow you an excuse to take extended breaks during the day. If you wanna look over some solar panel options that have been tested by folks who get out there and actually use this stuff, and backpack. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description that is the best options for solar panel chargers in 2019 as rated by Outdoor Gear Lab. I have used that website to kind of scope out a bunch of different gear options when I've been trying to decide between several different things. So it's definitely a good resource when shopping for backpacking gear. I'm gonna mention one more thing today that I don't really feel like is necessarily a feasible option for backpacking and I was hesitant to talk about it but I know if I don't probably somebody else will mention it and it could be applicable for somebody in some situation but there exists a stove that is fueled by either wood so just sticks that you find on the ground or by pellets that functions as a stove but it also has a 2600 milliamp hour battery connected to it that is charged by the heat from the stove. So you can plug in a USB and actually charge your phone and then the excess energy is stored in that backup battery. It is called the BioLite Camp Stove 2. Now, it is very expensive. It costs $130 and it weighs two pounds, one ounce. So that's why I said, I don't really think it's feasible for backpacking but if you had one of those situations where you're backpacking in and setting up base camp and doing day hikes or you know some other situation that you feel like this would be a good option then i just wanted to let y'all know this does exist all right y'all that is all i have for you today on how to charge your electronics while backpacking i hope that some of this information was helpful if you have any questions leave those in the comments below and also if you have a backup battery bank that you really like for a certain reason or especially a solar panel charger that you found that works for you then please share your experience in the comments below because I think that as people are trying to select some way to charge their electronics while backpacking it could be very useful information thank y'all so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe before you go and we will see y'all next time